good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Barnard peeps, depending on whenever you're looking at this. So um, Purim is coming up and one of the most kind of quintessential items or symbols of Purim are hamantaschen. Hamantaschen are those triangular shaped cookies. They say that they're made in the shape of Haman's hat. Whatever they are, I happen to think they're super yummy and they're fun and it's a great thing that you can do with your kids. However, the challenge is always the dough. Who's gonna make the hamantaschen dough and how do you make it? So for people who like to bake, making hamantaschen dough, not super, super difficult, although there's a gazillion recipes out there and each one's a little different. But for some people who are looking for a slightly easier way to do this with your kids, Sarah Lotion Rabbi Steiner came up with a really interesting hack that we're gonna show you today where you can make a version of hamantaschen starting with this sugar cookie dough. Um, this is not an endorsement of any particular brand. We get no payment for this. This just happens to be what I found in the grocery store near me. And so we're gonna show you a video on how you can start with sugar cookie dough, doctor it up a little bit, fill it with your favorite. I forgot to pull this out first. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Filling of choice. Um, mm, Nutella makes everything good. By the way, for those of you who are gonna say, don't buy Nutella because it uses palm oil, you're correct. However, the stuff I have that doesn't use palm oil, my kids ate all of it. So this is what I'm left with in the house. Um, whether you want something like Nutella or you wanna use the more traditional, um, like apricot, raspberry jam, poppy seed filling, totally up to you, I'm using this today. So anyhow, um, in just a moment, I'm gonna turn this camera around so you can stare at my hands and a bowl and a counter instead of this. And we're gonna show you how you can make a version of hamantaschen starting with sugar cookie dough. Here we go. Ah, I almost forgot. Always good to tell people what they need in advance so you can have everything ready to go. So before you start cooking, here's what you should have handy. Obviously, your roll of cookie dough that has been sitting out for at least an hour on your counter. A spatula. You'll see why this thing comes in handy. Um, I like using a metal one for this. If you don't have a metal one, just have one that's sturdy, not like a really bendy um, silicone one, that kind of thing. You want something that's sturdy. You're going to need some flour. It's just stuff for dusting on the counter so that when you flatten out these cookies, they're not gonna stick to your counter. Filling, as I said earlier, I'm using this stuff. Whatever you want, strawberry jam, apricot jam, poppy seed filling. Um, I've also used, um, they come in a can, apricot filling. Like if you ever had an, uh, like a, not apricot, listen to me, almond. If you ever had an almond croissant, that yummy almondy sweet filling in it, that stuff is awesome in hamantaschen. So you can use something like that, but have your filling of choice handy. Um, baking pans and parchment paper or a silpat mat of some sort. Um, each roll makes about 12 hamantaschen. So um, you can possibly fit them on one tray. It's actually possible. These things don't spread a lot. Um, but depending on the size of your trays, one to two trays. So make sure you have all your stuff handy before you start. Um, and a bowl, obviously, to put the dough in and mix stuff up. Um, but have it handy. It'll make things a lot easier. See you in a bit. So. Here's a bowl, here are my hands, man hands, um, and a log of sugar cookie dough. Now, this dough has been sitting out on my counter for about an hour, I would say at least an hour. When you take it out of the fridge, it's hard. Um, and we're gonna doctor this up with a little bit of flour because the sugar cookie dough needs to be stiffer. Otherwise, if you try to make hamantaschen with this, you will get kind of a flat blob of stuff. So. Pardon me if you hear my cat meowing in the background. That's not anybody dying, it's just my cat. Um, so anyhow, here's a log, and we're gonna add five tablespoons of flour. Now don't add it all at one time. I'm gonna do, pardon me, there's a little bit of that plastic from the plastic wrap there. I'm gonna do about a tablespoon at a time, and you wanna work it in. Hopefully I'll be able to figure out how to do that kind of speed up video little trick so that you're not gonna have to listen to me talk through this entire part but just in case, I'm gonna talk through it. Um, boy, do I have man hands and I look at this video. Anyhow, so we're gonna work it in about a tablespoon at a time, literally just squishing it in. Um, the thing I didn't mention at the beginning, by the way, is not only are you not gonna to have to make homemade dough, you also are not gonna need a rolling pin for this. Another perk. 
Um, I mean, I make homemade hamantash and I love doing it, but the whole rolling out dough stuff can be a bit of a pain. With this sugar cookie dough, you're not gonna need a rolling pin. So just So you want to make sure, like really work it in. I have a feeling I put in six by the feel of this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this and move the bowl out of the way. And I'm going to just on my counter kind of squish this. It's like working with Play-Doh, literally like working with Play-Doh. Squish it into a ball, trying to get some of the cracks and stuff out, smooth it out a bit. And we're going to put this back in our refrigerator for at least 10 minutes. It does need to get a little kind of stiffer than this now that this is warmed up. So I'm gonna put this in a bag, like just a Ziploc bag, just so it doesn't get kind of like crusty dry and stick it in the fridge for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and we'll be back when this comes out of the fridge. So here's my dough that's been in the refrigerator for at least 10 minutes. If you can leave it in there longer, it can't hurt actually, but I'd say 10 minutes at least. So I'm gonna take it out of the bag I had it in there's my dough okay um, as I said this does not involve pardon me as my watch banging my stove this does not involve rolling pins or even having to cut out circles this is like the easiest thing to do although it um, you know requires a little finesse so you'll see so anyhow I'm going to take some flour and sprinkle it on my counter I'm gonna spread it around Yes, your kids will probably love this if you're doing this with kids because they get to make a mess on your counters. Yay. I'm going to break off a hunk of dough. Now you're going to ask me, how much? And I'm going to say, I don't know because I don't measure anything. So you're going to break off a hunk. And I would say this is not the size of a baseball. Okay. This is about, this is about the size of a ping pong ball, actually. And I'm going to break it off and I'm going to roll it in my hands. Make a nice little kind of smooth ball out of it. Stick it on the counter. And I'm going to flatten it with the palm of my hand. Now you'll notice as you do this, it starts to crack on the edges. We're gonna deal with that, don't worry. So you're gonna flatten it out. You're also gonna say, how flat do I make it? And I'm gonna say, I don't know. Um, <laughs> this is how I bake. But what I would say is you're not making this paper thin. If you do, it's gonna break. Um, but you're not making it really thick because then it doesn't work either. So um, I don't know if that's like a quarter of an inch-ish, somewhere in there. So you're going to kind of pat this with your hands and then do this on the sides. Like you kind of take your finger and you're kind of getting those areas where it cracked to smooth out and come together a little bit. So this is this is kind of like your the sculpture part of the commenta the first part, I guess, of sculpting sugar cookie dough into hamantaschen is I use my fingers, I kind of pat around the edge. I'm trying to make it a little smoother because those cracks, they become a little problematic as we move forward. Um, not the end of the world. We're not going for perfection. We're going for fun. So here's my circle. Now, spatula. Get underneath it gently. Flip it over. Okay. This will help make sure, and I kind of drag it in the flour a little bit. It's not stuffed in my counter. Now, we're gonna put a little bit of filling in it. Now, one of the mistakes people often make with hamantaschen is they put too much filling in. Um, you gotta leave enough space for to bring up your edges. So I'm using little teaspoons here, and I kind of took like a, like a bulging teaspoon worth and shoved it in the middle. Now here is the sculpting part. Normally, if you look at a hamantaschen recipe, they teach you either the folding method, where you kind of fold one side, then a second side and then a third side, or this like pinching method. We're kind of using a version of the pinching method here. So I'm gonna use this just to relocate it a little bit. So if you took your hands like this and kind of made a quasi triangle, this kind of works for pulling up hamantaschen to make a triangle. So watch me, I'm kind of, watch me as I do this. I'm pulling up like two sides and a third side at the same time and see it's starting to break a little bit. This is one of the tricky parts of the sugar cookie dough, but it comes up and it starts to form this triangle. Now here, because sugar cookie dough is, is so soft, this is where you start kind of molding into shape. You wanna get all of these pieces 
really squished together well. Otherwise, it opens up on you and makes a mess. Um, which if you've ever made traditional hamantaschen, same problem. So let me get this back in the camera a little better. So I'm taking my fingers and I'm really, I'm honestly, I'm squishing this stuff together like Play-Doh. Um, I'm molding it literally like Play-Doh. So here it's like, I'm kind of like making sure these were squished together, but then it made this poke out more than I like. And I kind of take my finger and squish it back in. Okay. Now the other thing I'm gonna check is just kind of if you pick this up, if you have any cracks along these edges, kind of squish them shut a little bit. Like I'm kind of doing this because I had a few little cracks. Like see along here, I don't know if you can see that. Just kind of go like this, just squeeze them up. It just helps the filling not come out. Um, this, see this crack here? I feel like I'm talking about like geology or volcanoes. That's why when we did the circle at first, we tried to close up as many of those cracks on the edges of the circle because this is where they pop up. It's fine that they're here, don't worry about it. So anyhow, that is hamantaschen number one. And I'm gonna take this, let me close that up a little more. If you look and it looks like something's not closing up, just squish it. And I'm gonna put this on my Silpat mat. We're just gonna repeat this process like 11 to 12 times, depending. Um, like I said, last time I think I got about 12 hamantaschen out of a roll. If you get fewer, that's okay. It may mean you made them a little bigger. That's okay. This is not about perfection. Um, it's all going to work and the world will be fine and the sky will not fall. So not to worry. So we're gonna do one more together. Um, and I'm gonna share this with you. I'm gonna do one more together here because how often do I have one of these work and then the next one is problematic, happens all the time. And so I wanna show you how that works. So once again, we're flattening out Flattening out our circle here. We're gonna come around the edges. We're gonna bring these in. Try to close up those cracks because you saw where those cracks come up once you start folding things up. So work around the edges. It's not that it's about perfection. Those cracks just become a bit of a problem down the road. So, and I keep my hand, just kind of flatten it out. Really fancy stuff, okay? Take this, I'm gonna flip it over dredge it in a little bit of flour and just kind of bring in a few more of those cracks around the edges like I did. Okay, yes, my daughter, you can open the refrigerator. So my daughter walked in looking at me like, can I open the refrigerator? And the answer is yes. Okay, so I have my circle here. No rolling pin, no cutting, just shaping with your hands. If you've ever used Play-Doh, you can do this. Um, inevitably, I'm gonna have someone say, but I've never used Play-Doh. Well, get some Play-Doh and try it out, it's fun. Very therapeutic. Okay, taking like a teaspoon-ish blob of my filling, whatever it will, you know, whatever I'm using. I'm using the Nutella. You're probably using something else. I just really like Nutella. I will say if you use chocolate chips, please know, chocolate chips are hard. They will melt and become hard again. So don't expect that if you use chocolate chips, they will somehow then be soft in the middle of your hamantaschen after you bake them. That won't happen. Okay, now remember, kind of triangle shape. So I'm gonna pick up and see, it starts to break. I told you this first one works and the second one's gonna be problematic, but that's okay, it's okay. Sky will not fall. And see what happens? So now I have to shape it and seal it up. So this is where I go through. And this stuff, unlike traditional hamantash, when they talk about like wetting the edges before you bring them together, you don't need to worry about any of that with the sugar cookie dough. It's just a matter of squishing it together so that it like seals up. My poor cat is meowing in the background for some reason. I don't know why. She doesn't like commentation. So I've got this, you see it's like sealed up here. Good stuff. I'm gonna check the bottoms. Like, so if I have like little kind of cracky areas, just kind of squish them together. Okay, I'm gonna go through seal this up a little more. But anyhow, there you go, hamantaschen number two. Okay, so I'm not gonna have you watch me make 12 of these. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera off, make the rest of them, get them on a tray. Um, you will probably have to add, as you see, more flour um, to your countertop because each time you pick up some of the flour on the cookie dough. Um, yay, fun stuff here. Um, so anyhow, we're gonna put these on a tray and 
you're gonna cook them according to the instructions on the wrapper. Now, do I have my wrapper out handy? No, because I threw it away. Check the wrapper first, but I believe it's 350, somewhere from like 11 to 13 minutes, something like that. But check the instructions, because depending on the brand you have, it may be different. And also, use your judgment. I find in my oven, if I cook them for the designated time, they're almost always undercooked. It's just my oven. I often have to add on an extra minute or two, that's fine, no big deal, add on the extra minute. So you just wanna make them, they don't wanna be brown, cause they're gonna, even after you take them out of the oven, they're still gonna continue to cook a little bit. But you want them to be um, firm enough. You don't wanna like touch it and have it be liquidy, that kind of thing. So let me see if I can move my camera over a little bit, just so you can kind of see. So you're gonna put them on a tray, there you go. They don't have to be super far apart. They're not gonna spread out a lot. So let me finish making these. We'll get them in the oven and then I'll show you what they look like when they come out. So here I'm just gonna show you my tray of hamantaschen. You will see, it, there's a hodgepodge. So like that was the first one I made. It came out shaped you know, pretty nicely. I was pleased with it. And then you get a little bugger like this that looks like someone kind of drove over a wonton or something. I have no idea, along with that one. Like this is, that one came out good. This one's all cracked. Here's the deal. Do not get hung up on perfection with this stuff. Please, 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 people. Have fun with this. Have fun, because that is what it's about. So I am now going to attempt to put these in my oven while holding my camera, which takes more skill than one would think. And I'm gonna stick them on the top shelf of my oven. Probably should be the middle, but like I said, I'm not the greatest at following instructions. 350 degrees. I'm going to set my timer. This dough says 11 to 14 minutes. I know with my oven, it's gonna be 14 minutes. Ah, no, not 40 minutes. Duh, one, two, three. I'm gonna set this for 14 minutes. And when these are done, I'm going to take them out and show you what they look like. So my timer went off, but when I touch these, they're, you can see they're really soft. I'm gonna give them another couple of minutes. So hi again, everyone. I really hope you had fun with our hamantaschen hack baking session today. Um, you know, I hope that, you know, even if you're not a baker or you don't like to cook, cooking is just a great way to connect with Jewish tradition and ritual. Um, this has been the grayest winter ever. By the way, it's snowing out today. I'm filming this on Tuesday, the 26th of January. Um, it's snowing, it's gray, my hair is gray because I'm waiting for Madison Reed to show up. It has just been like the grayest winter ever. And I have done a lot of baking because it just feels good. The house smells good, my oven warms up the kitchen, um, and it just, it, it's been keeping me grounded. Um, in addition to all the wonderful stuff Barnard does, the food traditions keep me grounded to, I think, some of the broader Jewish traditions. Um, and my family is loving having the food in the house, although my hips and the rest of me are not so much. But um, I hope you had a lot of fun today with our hamantash and hack. These may not be traditional, but heck, they look cute and they taste good. Um, so just enjoy. And even if you don't have kids, you can still do this. It's okay. Um, you don't need to have kids to find hacks for stuff. Sandra Lee had an entire cooking show all about cooking hacks. So, um, my, because I didn't even introduce myself at the beginning, my name is Rebecca Rund. I'm the Sisterhood President at Barnard Temple. On behalf of Sisterhood, I wish all of you a very happy Purim, Chag Sameach Purim. Thank you to Rabbi Steiner and Sarah Loesch for actually coming up with this idea. I can't take any credit for it. I just did the video. Um, so thanks for coming up with the idea. I think it's a, it was a great idea um, and it was fun to explore and try something new. So happy Purim everyone. Bye-bye.